Hello, and uh, thank you for coming to our conference. Our conference topic today is Teachers Can Catalyze Student Motivation Through Culturally Relevant Pedagogy. Our presenters today as Eric Budd, myself, Eileen Raw, Danny Strabach, and Nick Swanson. Once again, thank you for taking time out of your day to watch this. So let's kind of introduce this and really describe the purpose of this research. Um, what kind of struck us and led us towards um, analyzing and evaluating culturally relevant text and culturally relevant pedagogy is we all had experiences in the classroom where we believed that we could in, um, kind of input some more culturally relevant text into our classroom. Um, I remember for myself when I was teaching um, my ELA and ninth grade ELA students, one of my black students said, Mr. Bud, can we have some more black authors um, to represent me and um, who I am and my culture? And that really got me thinking. And I know um, along with my other presenters, we've all had similar experiences with that short little um, narrative. So the purpose of our research is to evaluate the impact of culturally relevant texts um, and how, what they have on student perceptions, learning, and motivation. And the way we are going to um, achieve that purpose is through these three guiding questions and attempting to analyze and answer them. What does culturally relevant text look like? How do teachers minimize perceptions and implicit biases in order to introduce culturally relevant pedagogy and text into the classroom? And lastly, what are the consequences, implications of implementing culturally relevant texts? So culturally relevant text, otherwise known as CRT, we were gonna to refer to that um, as CRT throughout the presentation. Um, the definition of it, culturally relevant texts are those in which children can see themselves, in which their knowledge, beliefs, values, practices are mirrored by the character development, thought, and language. So there's two kinds of things that I wanna take away from this. We are providing students with windows and mirrors. And windows are essentially what transports students into other worlds that they have not yet experienced. So these texts are going to take students who have, may have not experienced a culture or a belief system and allow them an opportunity to view that belief or view that um, value um, through that window. And then we have mirrors, which essentially are modes um, that take the student um, in a way that where they are able to see themselves through. So they're able to see themselves in the text and they're ex able to experience um, that larger human experience and that self affirmation. So let's now take a look at the literature that supports this, uh, this text or this um, pedagogy of cultural relevant text. And uh, let's take a look at the efficacy of it in the classroom. So there's four barriers um, that culturally relevant texts assist in overcoming. And these are the barriers that were outlined um, in the research and identified. Um, and culturally relevant text takes those steps to overcome these barriers, such as achievement gap. Um, the second one is lack of student motivation. So one thing that I want to point out is student motivation, engagement, reading achievement, and identity are really all intertwined. And they all possibly um, are affected by children's opportunities to read culturally relevant text. So if we want to increase these achievement gaps and these student motivations, um, culturally relevant text is the way to um, really kind of overcome those barriers. Um, the second, uh, uh, third and fourth barriers are literacy challenges and narrow mindedness to different cultures, races, and beliefs. Um, so essentially what these culturally relevant texts do is they provide students um, to gain literal information and inferential and critical understandings of texts when they engage in lessons that provide opportunities to interact with ways that reflect uh, their ways of being in the world. So one of the ways is vocabulary. All of our students, um, especially in more culturally diverse schools have different dialects and different dictions. They pronounce words differently and have different vocabularies. When we are able to give them text that kind of self-affirm their vocabulary systems, that's gonna help them with their literacy challenges to overcome that barrier. And then we also have narrow mindedness to different races, cultures, and beliefs. So when you're able to provide that window towards other students, it becomes a more inclusive environment and inclusive class. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Eileen, who is going to tell us about who does culturally relevant pedagogy benefit. All right, yeah. So I'll be talking to you guys about um, who culturally relevant pedagogy benefits. 
Um, so culturally relevant pedagogy um, strives to promote engagement, achievement, and a sense of belonging for all students. Um, and it does this, especially when we're talking about the culturally relevant texts through representation in these texts. So a lot of times in our classrooms um, and in the traditional canon of literature, um, we see predominantly um, the white, white ethnicity culture represented. Um, and so CRP strives to represent those cultures that are less represented. Um, so the practice target, targets ethnic racial groups um, who are traditionally underrepresented in school curriculum um, and intentionally attempts to engage these students. Um, and most studies done with CRP um, in the past have targeted um, African American groups um, and African American, predominantly African American classrooms. Um, although there are recent studies that are striving to kind of um, generalize this more across the board of minorities and who we can um, kind of represent better in our texts and in our classrooms. Um, I'm going to hand this on to Nick now to talk about um, under what conditions CRT works best. Okay, so when we're looking at culturally relevant texts and also thinking about culturally relevant pedagogy, what's really important is that we have an understanding of our students, especially when we may not be the same cultural background or ethnicity of our students. And so doing that requires you to build trust and relationships with your students. There are various ways that any teacher can do that in their classroom setting, whether that's through activities, whether that's like through an who am I essay that you start to learn about your students. And I think it's really important that when we as teachers are thinking about how can we best incorporate our students' perspectives and, our, and how our students see the world into the classroom, it's really important that we let them tell us who they are. And that as culturally relevant, uh, including culturally relevant texts and being responsive to that keyword, an emphasis on responsive, we then seek out literature that they can identify themselves in. So that is a really important aspect of this, is getting to know our students. Because if we just go into a classroom and make assumptions about our students based on their ethnicity or cultural background, that could not always line up with how they see themselves, which is really important for understanding how we then build our culturally relevant texts in, in the classroom. So thinking about that, what we looked at is and in, in seeing the literature and through various studies is that by then having that relationship with your students, you can do a challenging curriculum. You can have interacting learning where students can see themselves in the literature. I think this quote is really important for us when we're thinking about culturally relevant texts, and I'll read it now. By choosing culturally responsive texts to get students engaged, crafting instructions around students' interests, integrating class discussions that fostered higher level thinking responses, incorporating writing activities that not only required critical thinking skills, but also served as a space for reflection, healing, and allowing for small group instruction, students' math skills improvement was observed over the academic school year. So what is this saying? It's saying that when we gear our instruction to our students through using culturally relevant responsive texts, we see increases in academic achievement. And that's something that, you know, we as teachers want to see. We want to see growth in our students' academic capabilities throughout the year. And by doing things like including texts where students can actually see themselves in their literature that they are reading, that can respond, that can cause students to respond well, um, especially when we're looking at academics. And this last quote, I think, once again, really highlights the importance of why culturally relevant texts are important in our classroom settings. And this is saying that designing supportive opportunities to promote academic achievement. Students can not only say, I can read, but can finally say, I feel a part of this learning experience and I am not alone. I think that last part saying that I feel a part of this learning experience and I am not alone is, is, is vital to 
what we are trying to do as teachers in creating a classroom of support, of safety, and where people can feel like they belong and explore different topics, explore their interests, explore their identity so that they feel connected to what they are learning about. And so this is what we are trying to do when we're trying to incorporate culturally relevant texts into the classroom. Okay, now that we've given you guys um, kind of a broad brush of what the research says about culturally relevant pedagogy and culturally relevant texts in the classroom, um, we must acknowledge some of the limitations on this empirical data of CRP. Um, so as I said, there are there are few really strong, empirically strong studies of CRP, um, and that is for about three reasons. So the first one is um, it's really difficult to control for all other variables um, when researching and studying the effects of a culturally relevant teacher in the classroom. Um, so as we all know, we bring a lot to the classroom as students and the teacher brings a lot to the classroom as a teacher. Um, and so these different kind of experiences make it difficult to um, isolate whether or not CRP is the only thing active in um, decreasing these achievement gaps and increasing student achievement and engagement. Um, additionally, the teacher or um, another academic professional is the person judging whether or not what they're teaching is culturally relevant. Um, and culturally relevant teaching itself is supposed to be student-centered and relating to the student. So um, a teacher and academic professional determining whether or not what they're doing is culturally relevant to their students um, presents some issues. Obviously, they're not their students. They don't know what their students are bringing. Um, so that does create some biases in the data. Um, and then finally, most of the studies done on culturally relevant teaching um, have been done in largely homogenous classrooms. So as I said earlier, um, most of the studies that we've seen focused on largely African-American classrooms um, and haven't really been um, transferred to uh, classrooms with other minorities. So like Asian-Americans or um, Latino-Americans, um, the research hasn't really been done there to kind of broad brushed against all minorities. Um, so those are some limitations that we see in the data. All right, and now we're going to transition into our practical application. So as we previously mentioned, implementation of CRT is a fantastic way for students to not only overcome barriers to success, but to also see themselves in the classroom, to feel heard. However, after, we've dive, after we dove into the research, the question of how can I incorporate CRT still remains. So there are four main factors that contribute to the success and the successful introduction of implementation of, of CRT. And those are as follows. One, teacher attitudes and expectations. Two, cultural communication in the classroom. Three, culturally diverse content in the curriculum. And finally, culturally congruent instructional strategies. Now I'll be highlighting each of the four of these in detail. The first of which is teacher attitudes and expectations. When we're thinking about CRT, it all begins with us, with the teacher, the instructor, and to a larger scale, the school community as a whole. Now, as a teacher, the first step is to ensure that you are committed to the introduction of CRT to your curriculum. It's important to have a rationale for the incorporation of a text. Essentially, we all have good intentions. You're watching this video because you are looking for ways to incorporate CRT into your own teaching, but it is important that we go further than just thinking a text might work and going for it. We have to do the research and figure out why we think this text might be beneficial for our individual students. And we know each A school looks vastly different and the expectations associated with which texts are included can vary greatly. Some communities have full autonomy over the texts they would like to include. Others are really um, blocked into a certain curriculum and that could be down to texts. So we may not always have equal opportunity as to what texts we can include, but should they allow that full freedom in design, we need to ensure that our rationale is sound and that our implementation is well planned in order to maximize the potential benefits for our students. 
So when we think about cultural communication in the classroom, there's one quote that really sums it up for me in terms of cultural influences. It's what we talk about, how we talk about it, what we see, attend to, or ignore how we think and what we think about. So it's important to be cognizant of these cultural differences between students when communicating on culture to the classroom. For example, as a white male teacher myself, I need to be cognizant of the cultural uh, backgrounds that my students have and that I do not want to appropriate theirs by asserting about a culture or a lived experience that I may not be as familiar with. While each of our lived experiences are important, it may not be the same as each of our students. So how does this impact our implementation of CRT? It's through culturally diverse content in the curriculum. And the selection of content is imperative to successful implementation of CRT. I know it can be intimidating, especially if your base knowledge is a little low. But here are 10 criteria that you, can, that you should consider when trying to select CRT. And those are author, the publisher copyright date, so how recent is this text, the lexile, grade level, the category, genre, if there are stereotypes present, character, characterization, cross-curricular opportunity, and then finally, the writing style or the appeal to readers. So with culturally congruent instructional strategies, there are five main strategies that, that we hope that you can take out of today. And those are as follows, that you activate students' prior knowledge. Our students have a wealth, a plethora of background knowledge. They come from various cultures and there's so much they can bring to the classroom. I'm fortunate enough to teach in the Bay Area where a vast amount of my students come from Asian American backgrounds, uh, Latinx American, Black communities, and they all can bring so much to class. Sometimes as the teacher, it's really important to let them have a stake in the conversation, a stake in the, the text. They can teach us. We need to make learning contextual. And by that, I, I build off the first point. Each of our communities are different uh, in terms of our cultures, in terms of um, other demographics, socioeconomic status. So it's important to be aware of this. We also want to encourage students to leverage their cultural capital. We want to make sure that students know that they can express their, their backgrounds, their beliefs, their lived experiences, and that they can really use that to, to deepen our understanding of a culturally relevant text. We should consider our classroom setup, especially for English. Most of us have class libraries. In that sense, we should be cognizant of what texts are we pre presenting in the optional readings, in the, just the texts that we have available. Are those whitewashed? Or are those also coming from our previous 10 points on CRT? And then finally, we need to build relationships. We need a classroom community of trust, and we need to make sure that our students feel heard enough so that they can really advocate and help us elevate our pedagogy to the next level. And then in terms of standards, if you can properly implement CRP in conjunction with thoughtful planning, you can essentially satisfy the requirements of all of standard two, reading literature and nonfiction texts, 2.1 all the way through 2.14. And I would like to preface that with that being said, you need to make sure that with that thoughtful planning, you hope to incorporate those individual strategies because simply implementing a culturally relevant text will not do that on its own. All right, so in conclusion, um, when we do apply culturally relevant pedagogy well, um, and include these culturally relevant texts in our classroom. Studies show that um, our students often will um, form positive ethnic racial identities, um, as well as increase achievement for those marginalized groups. Um, now, as we've learned this summer in um, developmental psychology, forming that identity is an essential part of education, um, especially for students at the ages we're teaching, middle school and high school. Um, and so that, that formation of a positive ethnic racial identity is essential for their role in school, as well as their role in the community at large. Um, and then increasing this achievement gap, there should be no reason that um, students of minority backgrounds are falling behind um, predominantly white students. So increasing this achievement gap is a huge part of what we're trying to do as teachers. Um, and then as that last quote on the page says, constructivist practices and promotion of cultural competence were positively associated with academic outcomes. Um, so this is really just good teaching, um, knowing your students, 
working with them and what they bring to the table um, really improves their ability to perform in the classroom and as a citizen in general. Thanks so much for listening. We look forward to hearing your questions and your concerns, your interests um, next week. Have a great day.